All right, so the current FedEx CEO warned today we may be living in a global recession right now, knocked the stock market down about 300 points when it happened. Anyway, here on set to weigh in an old friend, a great American who has served his country in battle, as well as inventing the most remarkable transportation distribution and logistics system ever devised, Fred. Right. Fred Smith is the founder and now currently executive chairman of FedEx. Um, you and I were chatting briefly on the phone and email, and your CEO has come out. I mean, we're in a downturn, and uh, FedEx sees everything, so you have a very authoritative position. Well, not only do we see everything, Larry, you know, we're moving 16 million shipments a day all over the world and in the United States. Uh, if I had to just take a swag at it, my guess is between us and UPS, our really mm -hmm. only peer competitor, we probably have about 12% of the country's GDP in our planes and trucks every day. So we're not looking at statistics, we're talking to customers. And uh, I think you saw a sea change from June forward because oh. inventory to sales ratios were going in the right direction. But the price of fuel, because of the energy policies of Europe and the United States, driven mostly by, you know, environmental good intentions, mm. caused this tremendous run-up in fuel, which peaked on June the 15th. Mm. And uh, at the same time, you've had over the last 15, 16 months, five separate occasions from the American Recovery Act right. in March, where you've had money being pumped into the, to the economy. Now, we're the only people in the world can do that because we're the reserve currency. And as President de Gaulle of France famously said, it's an exorbitant privilege, privilege because if we want to buy something, we just print the money. The problem is when that comes head to head with the lack of labor that we have in the United States to meet the demand, and that's what caused in the main the supply chain crisis. People misjudged that it was some sort of shipping issue. In the main, after the correction of the pandemic, there simply wasn't the labor to offload the mm. containers to, to distribute the items in the fulfillment centers. So you had those five separate elements, the Recovery Act, the Infrastructure Act, the CHIPS Act, mm. the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, and then you had the president's uh, uh, administrative thing. No, not on climate, on the uh, tuition refund. Oh. So all of those are pumping right. money into the economy and you have demand and you have jobs going up, but since you don't have nearly the number of people in the workforce that you need to meet this demand, you have inflation going through the roof. So I don't see, look, uh, I mean, we've both been around quite some time in these business cycles. If you're still increasing demand like they are, I mean, it's an odd story because the Bidens are increasing stimulus, but the Fed is trying to stop the stimulus. That's a very bad position to be in because they're gonna put the whole onus of inflation fighting on the Fed which leads me to ask you, uh, are we in the early stages of this recession? Or is, it, is this going to go on for a while? Well, I, I think our CEO would, would uh, say that, you know, the terminology recession has, has been debated on this network about the Bureau of Economic Statistics, one, you know, two, two quarters having a negative GDP. We're sort of in an unusual position like Larry Summers and Kevin Hassert, who you mm -hmm. have on here. We're sort of in a stagnation, mm -hmm. stagflation period mm -hmm. because you have this tremendous demand, but we're still one percentage point in terms of lower labor participation rates today mm. than we were before the pandemic. Mm. And if you really net it down, it's the combination of this energy policy that got us in trouble and gave Putin the false belief that he could start a war. Right. And at the same time, you simply do not have the workers to meet the demand that's been juiced by these mm -hmm. uh, uh, printing of this money. So it, it, it's exactly like sitting in your car, putting your foot on the accelerator and the brake at the same time. This cannot be good. It can't be good because at the end of the day, everything is gonna hit the Fed and the Fed can't turn this around until labor and demand come into uh, you know, balance. And basically, Chairman Powell has said that. We need more producers, oh, sure. not less. 100%. But it would be nice, I think, if we have a... I'm all for safety nets during times of crisis, but the safety net should have 
some work requirements, some work fare to get folks back into the labor force. We're paying, I mean, I don't want to sound cruel and heartless because I don't believe I am. And Ronald Reagan taught me my first go around in Washington that we've got to have a safety net during times of emergency, but we've gone way too far. And we don't ask people to go back to work or look for work. So they're staying out there and they're making money. They're not getting rich, but they're making money. We need them. We need producers. Producers. Well, Larry, you're hitting the fundamental issue along with the lack of a cogent energy policy. Right. The problem is, as Europe has shown, when you make work optional, your economy stagnates. Yep. So there's a great book that came out, I think, just yesterday by Senator Phil Graham, whom you and I yes. both know. He's yes. a brilliant economist, along with two other economists, and it's called The Myth of American Inequality. Yes. And what he shows is if you subtract the taxes paid by the top earners mm -hmm. and you add back in the transfer payments to the lowest quintile, the, the disparity is not nearly what people mm -hmm. think it is. But today, because the recipients of transfer payments aren't tied to any sort of work requirement, mm -hmm. you can have a situation where in Massachusetts, uh, a married couple with two children can receive $100,000 of, of benefits. Right. So the lowest quintile, the lowest 20% uh, of, of income uh, earners in the United States, only 36% of them work now. Right. So that's we incredible. just have an enormous shortage of labor yeah. to meet the demand that's been juiced by these, uh, these legislative yeah. efforts. And if you don't produce... You're not going to grow the economy. If you don't produce, you're not going to absorb all that money that yes. they're printing. Yes, I mean, it's exactly. just lose, lose, lose. Phil Graham will be sitting in that very spot next week. Well, he's, he's a very great dear man. friend and mentor yeah. of mine. Yeah. I have him on the radio all the time. Anyway, Fred, we got to go. I loved your speech to Annapolis. Well, it, it, it restores your faith in America to see those young midshipmen I'll down bet. there. I'll yeah, bet. and by the way, you know, we're, we're doing pretty well relative to Europe and China these days. So we just need to get the right policies in place. Yes, sir. The cavalry is coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank okay. you, Fred Smith. Thank, Thank you. you for all your service. Okay. I'll